didn't have a great knowledge in the country, in Ireland, of wh where we were going, uh, what the climate would be like, uh, whether it would be bush, whether it would be uh, jungle, whether it would be built up cities. So really we were very unprepared uh, at that stage. My mother did not know where I was going, the Lord mercy on her now. She came to the Cora here to see me off. Uh, my dad was dead since 47, but she did not have an idea where I was going. We were looking up on maps to see where, where was the place and we couldn't find it on the maps. And we were volunteering to go to this place. Don't forget, we were only three weeks get together and there was lads going out on patrol and still affected by inoculations. And various other things, the whole, they wind the heat. On top of that, like, you know, inoculations against uh, malaria, typhoid, you name it. You had about 10 inoculations in one day. Teeth extractions, medicals, and this, that, and the other. You didn't get time to think. Erin Shachtu Law Fihid the Yul Nideg Shaska, Valigan Hed Grupa Kamadha Shihona Lechela Ek Baliadonal, Oitra Etline Merkonacha, Globemaster C 124s, Ags Hercules C 130s, Ek Fanach on the Sidori Yahurtik in Afrik, Be Far Camera Archie Rayside on Tain Valgan Airhor, Avi Atashtal Leshen Katlon. And we had a plastic bag like a child would have going on a picnic with some sandwiches. That was our rations, if you like. You see the lads going on board with a little plastic bag in their hand. So we were off to uh, the great adventure. These massive planes. <laughs> God, how are they going to get off the ground? I remember there was fellas getting down the plane, holding their hand over their arm. And if anybody rushed against them, there was a squeal and you could get a belt in the jaw. They were after having the smallpox vaccination. And at this stage, it had come up into the big blister of a thing. In the early days, we went out in the bull's wool, the heavy woolen tunic which was buttoned up to the neck. And the boots were the old studded boots, the hobnail boots. We were so far behind. I'd say secretly, probably people were, some of them were laughing at us. Like the Americans, they couldn't believe where, where are these coming from. We were kind of a tourist attraction type. All the Americans were pointing at us. They thought we were going to the North Pole, in fact, one fellow said. Dara le quid gunna fir nail cuddle oil, ach vi quid ele aqua ufos och teen, father se detel chia trust in the horpa, agas arai gedro na hafrika huig. We flew to Chateau in France. We then flew to Tripoli, to an American base. We then flew to Cano, and that's when the heat hit it. I thought I was up to walk in front of a jet engine <clears throat> because the heat was blowing off the desert. And we had never experienced heat like that in our lives. So anyway, we discovered it wasn't a jet engine that was going to burn us. It was just the heat off the, uh, off the desert. When I landed in it first, my biggest disappointment, after watching Taras and films and stuff like that, <laughs> my biggest disappointment when I looked out the back door of the aeroplane we were on, there were no trees. There was only little sort of bush scrub. I was expecting big, tall trees. <laughs> Standards were much higher. Uh, like Elizabethville and Leopardville were huge, big modern cities, big skyscraper hotels, outdoor swimming pools. There was no comparison to Dublin. Ach near Inis an Ryrk Shin an scale ar fad. Bronu nas blachas ar chango na belige ar an triachul law de vehiv, agus near vada grau an tír in a kír puhul. Dair an tar ma mach in ai ifigig belgeche a vi bom, agus hossashiad ag maru is ag skrisa. Dear Patrice Lamomba, an priv ar an nua tofa, cower ar na nasiú nintehe. A chug an scale an nonas nor a vrish counter rachmasa katanga on chudelagan Congo, fui chanrocht moiz chombe. Fui koga kahrga ar bon a katanga nish idar na kanikat lantori chombe agus na baluba a via guine kina an uchtar an chombe skara leis an chudelagan Congo. The balubas come down to Nyimba about two months before the ambush or in around a month or whatever. And we went out there to see what the problem was. There was a whole lot of people dead. And uh, that was a bit scary. 
It was our job to repair any bridges. So we kept doing this day after day. We'd fix the bridge, they'd pull it down. We'd go back, fix the bridge, they'd pull it down. It was a matter of perseverance. So that went on for a couple of weeks. So they weren't too angry with us. We weren't too angry with them. But then a few things started to happen. The Chambe a Kurishtaka with John Darm, who had a high dory tourist in Belga Gabona, who had a Baluba Hli, a lag in a good Baltic Talov, who had a Baluba, a Guana deal to smack, a Rev Chambe. Leshen Schele in a Niskaster, who had a John Darm with Usoid Fehekli, a Vikasulio shoot at Usoid and Hernik, Agaston a Baluba, Franik the Hernik Bona in a Gultica Tropicaha, and a Kasul. They turned against us. The Belugas turned against us. They seemed to believe that we were maybe taken over where the Belgians, colonials, had left off. That was my feeling about it. Where one day they seemed to be friendly enough, angry but friendly. They started to become more hostile. And then we have the events of what happened on the 8th of November. Er anochtu law de vina sauna nideg shaska, dog Lieutenant Kevin Gleason, a last can of sea, Sergeant Hugh Gaynor, agas ninur ele and garaston ag niemba, le dull er fatrol. Honig shiad er grihit brishta er awan luhu ee. And I told him, Whatever you say or whatever you do, be very, very careful with the Balubas. They are very, very dangerous. No problems, he said. They know we are the United Nations and that we are here to help them. Somebody rolled out Baluba cats. And of course, I put out my head to see, and I saw a fellow with a leopard skin hat and a bow and arrow. And another fellow with a white shirt, a pair of shorts, and a bow and arrow. And Gleason and uh, Gaynor went down to talk to them. The altitude from the Irish was that they thought that everyone was friendly. We can do that, we can go to that village. And, I, I, and that took a long time for me to convince this is war. Then the Balubas came from behind, screaming, shouting. That was the last, that was the last moment for them to man all weapons. In our tradition, there's an in-base uh, appreciation that violence solves nothing and that you should release a shot or fire a shot just uh, in the last uh, extremity. The Balubas then attacked Lieutenant Gleason, tried to say Yambu, and then he got an Arab. And he went down on Monday, now he the Gustav, and he told us to withdraw into the bush. Take cover, lads. We're all going to be killed. And they attacked from, uh, yeah, in principle, from all directions. And uh, it was only a question of time before everybody was killed. The patrol should be back by 4 o'clock, 1600 hours. That's normal procedure, because at 1800, 6 o'clock, it would be dark. So it came to 5 o'clock, 1700 hours, no sign. So by darkness then, it was obvious they weren't going to come. We were informed that a patrol, a rescue group was on route from Albertville, 200 kilometers from here. It was going to take them many hours to get to us. We couldn't launch a rescue. We had no transport, that was all gone with the patrol. So about five o'clock in the morning, all 500, we could see in the east the vehicles coming. Myself and seven other guys were dead. We came with the rescue, <clears throat> rescue unit uh, the day after. I proceeded into the bush, so 60 paces. And in a small clearing, I found the bodies of Lieutenant Gleason and Sergeant Gamer. They had been badly mutilated. We then carried on the search. And we found uh, several bodies.
one body we didn't find, and Tony Brown's we didn't find. After 10 minutes, Joe Fitzpatrick appeared. I feel that I'm, I'm just a very, very lucky man to be sitting here today. Jesus and Mary, I nearly pray to them every day for getting out of Noyimba. Of course, you had people that said you ran away. You know, you're sitting in a pub or something and you're still running and you know, all these remarks, uh, in the end, was, is that what you call them? No one ever apologised. It took me 47 years to get this Medal of Honour. My family name to start. I'm contented enough. In my mouth, Nidak Shaska, we strayed in a valley of clear Dovla Dina Dina Gordis. We in a sloita on a reach, her law for a mean sauna. Ach nira la clush dial and law shin. Ach bullin and rummy, agus clig shape ale. Father Sahoig and Tucker, three chahar a vee fui vroin. The Michael Colton at Tunlakan the Sokrida, Agus Eg Dailal in a Hragoid Farsen to Hain, the Alan of Mick Kyle to Eg Michael Agus Avan Lily. He died on the 31st of October, and on the 2nd of October, or the 2nd of November, I should say, uh, I was informed of his death. So I went down then to the barracks to ask them to send him home, and they told me if I sent it, he's fair. They'd get him home. At that time, there was no repatriation unless he were able to pay her own fair home. But I hadn't got the money because we had very small money from the army that time. And uh, I said I hadn't got the money. So I had to get the child buried myself. They decided they'd send me home with the bodies as part of the escort. This was eight or nine days after the lads had been killed. The stench was incredible. As you can imagine, it was the worst trip I ever had in my life. But then he came home and he had to go back again. <laughs> 